man, the landlord of One Chance, One Life TV. Welcome to One Chance, One Life TV, One Chance, One Life podcast, you know, whichever one you prefer to run with. I got the pleasure of having Audio Jones with me, the super producer, the super super entrepreneur, I should say. Yeah, all right, all right. I like that. I like that. Hey, man, thank you for having me, man. I'm really excited. I know we've been um, planning this for uh, uh, several weeks, maybe maybe even a couple months, um, and we're finally here, man, and... Um, this is a new uh, new experience because I originally know you from uh, working with you as an artist, and here you are, uh, the media platform, man. That is, uh, man. I want to first off, I want to say, man, applause to you, because you saw it and you made the pivot. And uh, I always champion, um, especially with entrepreneurship, when you just when you make those pivots and you do it what seems to be effortlessly. But uh, the, you definitely got to give people their congrats. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, most definitely. I, I'm just trying to, you know, utilize the platform to help out with, you know, artists and everybody in any way possible, man. I just want to, you know, help others and introduce people to people and connect the dots, you know, any way that I can utilizing this platform. Now, that's that's awesome. I think so. The motivation for this, uh, for, for the platform was... Uh, a springboard for artists or anybody and everybody that's just trying to yeah any and everybody I feel like you know I don't feel like when you're doing things you got to do it for everybody I feel right you know what I'm saying Ain't no sense of picking and choosing you know what I'm saying so you know it's, it's for everybody man you know I want like if I could you know you got younger artists that might not be familiar with audio Jones you know what I'm saying and through my relationships I could get them directly in touch with Audio Jones, you know what I'm saying? And now Audio Jones has established itself to where he's not just a producer. He could provide all kind of other things for him, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I talking about pivots, uh, being Audio Jones, the producer, and and making the change to uh, marketer brand, uh, marketing and branding, video production, you, you name it, um, has been... Uh, an amazing journey. It's been an amazing journey. And it really coined from being like that independent hustle. You know, it's like, man, we need a music video. Like, I done shot my own music videos, you know, so it's like, or I needed some graphic art. Like, I remember downloading a crack version of Photoshop trying to figure out how to make an album cover, you know, so right. it's like, you know, now we're here. So yeah. it's, it's, it's been a dope experience. Right, right. So let's, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's go to from the beginning. Audio okay. Audio Jones, the producer. Okay. For the, okay. For the people who's unfamiliar with Audio Jones, the producer, like, give them name some of the tracks and some of the artists you work with. Okay. So yeah, definitely. So the beginning of the producer, um, I would say that goes back to two thousand and seven or eight. You know, because I was really I really started as an artist. Uh, R&B artist called uh, Prince Ty. You know, like my introduction into the music industry was uh, I had a single with Trick Daddy called um, So Ghetto. And what year was this for the people oh, that's not familiar? 2006, maybe 2007. <laughs> it was a minute. It was a minute. It was a minute. And then um, I was a part of an independent label. Um, you know, I was on, I'll tell you how old this was. I was on Power Love Hour, um, Power 96. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, um, and then just like any uh, most artists, their story in the beginning is you sign that bad record deal, you make some bad decisions, you took the money because, you know, it was the, I ain't never seen like nine grand before like that in one lump sum. And then later found out it was like a really, really bad record deal. And um, I, I, had, I had to make a transition from there. Not to cut you off, but how old were you at the time that you signed the record deal? Old enough to sign it without my mom. Right. So like 19, right. something like that, like 18, 19. And um, I, I signed it. And then we did like a good like two years. Uh, yeah, about two years trying to just, you know, break as an artist. Um, and unfortunately, it did, you know, it didn't pan. But I got a lot of great, op a great, a lot of learning there because I got to be a part of the process, you know, like putting my EPK together, you know, uh, packaging up. Like, I remember, you know, I don't know do they still do it, but, like, sitting in there and doing, like, 150 drops for DJs and stuff, you know, like the the the, the hustle, you know. And right. a lot of that group, uh, a lot of that was put into me then 
And then I, tra- I took that with me when uh, that all went haywire to, to become uh, the music producer. Right, right. Because I had to make a pivot. Right. So I got to, you know, let the people know, like, I got familiar with your sound as a producer through Iceberg. Yes, 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 yes. He was my introduction into the, I would say, the introduction into the streets. Right, right, <laughs> For right, sure, right. for sure. It's Berg definitely gets all the um, uh, all the love for that because, you know, uh, we worked on uh, various projects and various records, but the one that kind of definitely, like, kicked it off for me was that Hella Plays in Motion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Hella, was, yeah, hella sure. Plays in Motion, man, yeah. So what what kind of opportunities did that did that record bring your way? That other plays in motion. As a as a uh, inspi- aspiring producer, you know, in the in in this scene, you know, like I really when I really came when I really if, if I can be honest, like when I first decided to do this and be a music producer, I'm like I ain't fucking with that artist shit no more. I'm gonna just be a producer I'm gonna make the beats. I was like, man, I'm going straight to the top, Jay Z's and everybody, you know. So I try to jump. The line, but to be honest with you, what I, I learned was like, it's it's the it's the people that you start with that are really gonna help you build the foundation for you to become who you are. And he really was a major part of my story. Um, what that did for me was it introduced me to his whole uh, to his fan base. You know, back then I didn't really understand anything about marketing or and um, anything about marketing. So for me, you know, I'm just happy I got a placement at this point, you know, and this with Berg. But it opened the door and it, and it, it created a, a touch point for people to uh, know who Audio Jones, the producer, was. So, I mean, I'm forever in, uh, forever uh, gracious for the opportunity. Um, then when we did the remix with Jim Jones, so that was kind of like, oh, okay, I got a big name, you know, uh, you know, um, and then that, at that same time, we was doing a lot of stuff, uh, servicing to uh, Trina as well, right. who was another um, staple, uh, another very intri- uh, instrumental uh, person in my development and, and getting me to where I, you know, uh, as a producer, getting me to where I wanted to be and getting to me, getting to be somebody where, like, it's weird, you know, my little brother be like, when growing up, he'd be like, man, people know who you are. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, like, because I'm just, uh, I don't really take it that serious. Right, you know, it's, right. It's, it's still weird to me, you know. Sometimes I'll be like, man, well, you Audio Jones. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need some graphic art? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so besides Trina, Iceberg, and Jim Jones, speak on some more uh, producer credits you have, like, as far as with artists. Oh, okay, yeah, definitely. So um, I've done work with uh, – the most recently, the City Girls. Yeah, I was on about like three projects with the City Girls. Those uh, those my babies. You know, they re- they also took me to another height and another level where I got to experience like placements, uh, major placements, and like that whole process. You know, like going, getting that first the first time getting paid through like a like a the payment portal that Universal like sends you to set you up so you can get paid as a vendor. You know, like I never walked through that process, so that experience was like, uh, definitely new. Um, I also got to work with guys like uh, Emilio Rojas. Out of hold up, hold up. Sorry, I apologize for cutting you off, but for the up-and-coming producers, mm-hmm. elaborate more on that process. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, typically when you're working with, like, indies, it's it's a it's a pretty, you know, standard process. You know, you get a producer agreement, y'all agree on a fee, and um, – the exchange is, is pretty simple with when you get a major placement it's different you know there's there's obviously the production agreement so you got all the legal process but then the payment process is just different like you might get paid if there's something called net 60 or sometimes net 90 that means like the invoice gets submitted but you might not get paid for 60 days you're not you might not get paid for 90 days and to be honest with you i've been in situations where you might not get paid for 6 months whereas where we we kind of like we look at getting records placed with majors because of the opportunity but i'll be honest with you like i'd much rather work with independent right right because it's straight straight to the business you know when you go through the red tape of working with majors man i know like and it ain't just like newcomers it's like all producers like i don't care if you got you can have grammys under your belt they still making you wait for your check right right 
So it's something that you will experience, and you know, you just gotta hustle. You know, uh, I made a, I could, I'll be honest with you, I made a mistake. You know, like when you get that first major placement, first thing in your mind is like, oh man, I done made it, man. I'm about to, you know, I'm gonna be a millionaire. You know, and then you go through the process and you find out, oh, you gotta do a lot more. <laughs> you just got here, baby boy. You know, so it's a, it's a humbling experience. You know, it's it's uh, the same experience that I had as an artist being on the radio, but I'm also going to go work in the call center. You know, so it's 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 always a reminder that you ain't done working, you know, until you finally reach that critical threshold. So it's um yeah, that that's the experience though. But um you'll get your money eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what's up. So now we could get back focus it on naming some Credits. of the, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So City Girls, I got an opportunity to work with uh Lil Wayne, uh through Trina, Nicki Minaj working with Trina. Um, Seven Streeter, Joe Budden, Pusha T, um, and I know I'm missing some more, man. But yeah, we've I've 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 had a good nice run, you know. Yeah. Definitely, I was like really heavy during like the mixtape days, like the Dat Piff days, you know. Just in, in Miami, uh, locally, you know, I feel like I, I feel like I work with most most of everybody: Briscoe, Billy, um, you know, Berg, yourself, my guy Hound from Overtown. Um, we can't forget Lil Dread. Lil Dread, oh my yeah. God, how can I forget, man? That yes, yes, uh, yeah, brother Malcolm, we call him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't forget you and you and Dread, y'all created some good music. We definitely can't forget you and Lil Dread. Yeah, that was a great that was a great chemistry. You know, um, I really like uh, was like a real fan. Like, oh wow, this kid can go. Like, he can really, really go. Like, he rap, rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he rap, rap. Yeah, shout out to Lil Dread, man. Yeah, shout out. Shout out Dread, man. Yeah, so, so, okay, now, moving along from the producer. Okay. What is Audio Jones currently doing right now? What is he, what, like, what, what currently has your most focus? I like how you praise that. Um, so I'm still, I still produce, I still uh, make music. You know, it's more of a, like, um, people who know that I make music come to me and be like, hey man, we need to work on a record or we need to put some, you know, put some work in. And, um, you know, we, we do what we do. But most of my focus honestly has been building out uh, my agency for marketing and branding for uh, artists. You know, like I went and got certified in digital marketing um, and I started working with a lot of uh, different corporate companies trying to help them develop content strategies, you know, uh, podcast, um, any way that they can make uh, any way that they can develop a content strategy to get more brand awareness. Because I realized I was getting it to a place where I was like tired of making good music and watching it fall flat. And then me sitting there being like, damn, what, what happened? You know? And then I had to go in and do some research and realize I was missing a very key essential component to running a successful campaign when releasing music. And that was, to be honest with you, it was just, it was marketing. So, <laughs> that was the, the key thing we were missing. Right. So explain explain to all up and coming artists right now how important the marketing, marketing and everything, how important of a role that plays when you're releasing music. Oh, man, marketing is everything. Because it, I know it sounds cliche. It's like, oh, you need some marketing. But, you know, what I realized, too, in this, in this process, in this journey is most people um, don't know what marketing is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, there is an information and knowledge gap. You know, a lot of people think that marketing is, you know, posting the the artwork for their project. That's cool. You know, you, I mean, that's like a, you know, you're supposed to do that. You know, but marketing really is, uh, it's e is email marketing, is it's email list, is is social media marketing. So, uh, creating a social media calendar. Um, I also have a philosophy that. You can't mark. You can't get to marketing until you until you've developed brand, because the brand tells you how to market. Right, it's right. It's the vehicle to to expose people to your brand. You know, like I, I mean, they say um, free game. It take twelve touch points. Twelve touch points could be a email, a social media post. It could be. Um, it could be an ad, you know, like, so they need 12 touch points for them to 
to get like familiar with you and for them to even have a potential of converting into either signing up for your email list or clicking on the ad to go listen to your song on on, on uh, Spotify. Um, so I had to learn all of these concepts because, again, I was just so tired of, like, seeing it fail. Right, right, right. So, yeah, marketing is, is everything. I don't know how you do – I don't know how – there's no business that I know that don't uh, – that doesn't use marketing. Right, right. So, in reality, you, you're very grateful with taking the time out to – Get a better understanding with the marketing and get a better understanding on why your music was constantly falling flat. A, a thousand, a thousand. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was life or death. It's like, uh, it was insanity to keep doing it the way I was doing it. Right. So I was just like, all right, I, I got to figure this out. This ain't working. What do I do? Um, let me sit, let me, let me fall back and let me look at this. I was too close, you know, so I had to back off and be, and really, take a really good look at like what 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 did I want once I really determined what I wanted then it was time for me to develop a, a strategy and and do the research and then that's when I started uh looking online and started to really take a good look at social media because I'm be honest with you I I was always I always knew how important social media was but I was never like I was never engaged with social media, even to this day. As a marketer, as a marketer, and working in branding, like I don't, I spend little time on social media. Right, you right. Know, because personally, I, I kind of, I do, I'm mostly learning. Right, right. But social media is how we talk to each. It's, it's how we communicate with each other nowadays. You know, like so, you, you, you got to get good at it. Right, right. So recently, uh. Super Cindy of 99 Gems. Oh, yes. She took to her Instagram and said she's stepping down from 99 Gems. I heard. I, I, did, I did hear that. I did hear that. Now, we both know being from Dade County, you know, we watched her for, shit, maybe like two decades, put in the work and grind. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, her stepping down, like in your personal opinion, do you think that's a win or a loss for uh, Florida artists? I think... The stepping down might be strategic. It could be that there may be, and I'm speculating. I don't know. I haven't talked to her, and, and 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 I've known Cindy for uh, years, um, and she's very talented, very passionate um, person, um, and 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 she really supports right, South right. Florida, right? Um, I think that this may be strategic. And she may be working on her own platform, and right. that might be something like on YouTube or something like that. Her own podcast. I mean, she, you know, she has the personality to do it. Right. And nowadays, you know, watching so many people transition into what I would say digital media, right? Because radio is linear. Um, radio isn't necessarily dead. It's just let's be honest. If you if you're serving if you're serving to a, a particular demographic, I don't know that many kids that listen to the radio. Right, right, right. So that, that I mean that's that's my opinion. I, I think that's what that's probably what's happening. Right. I right. ain't hundred percent sure. In, in your opinion right now, for all the up and coming Dade County artists and Florida artists, period, what do you feel like is needed to help get these artists to the next level? Um me personally, I think that, ooh, you know, I hear that question a lot, and it, it's it's so many it's so many answers, you know, it's because I look at being an artist as like a startup, you know, like a is starting a new business. So first thing I would be I would say is like either acquire business acumen. Um, you know, YouTube University, all, everything I know is off YouTube. I didn't go to nobody college, except for my certification in digital marketing. Um, if you're not somebody who has business acumen, maybe consider um, building a team with somebody who can handle, like, the business side of of your of your business because you are a business you know like if you don't if you don't have yourself established as an llc you you don't have a business bank account 
Uh, you don't have a Dunn's number. You're you're you hustling. You, you hustling. I don't know. I don't know what, what you're doing and why you're doing it. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? So right. It's right. Like, you know, if you do the same things that you would literally do for any business that you wanted to run, you can then leverage what you're doing to, let's say you wanted to get lending. All right, well, what do lenders want to see? They want to see you got an LLC. They want to see you have your Dunn's number. They want to see you have a website, a commercial, a commercial line. Like, you, an artist has to diversify from being just um, a musical talent. They actually got to become media companies. Right, right, right. I agree. And you know what I'm saying? With that being said, being an entrepreneur, period, how important is a team? Uh, there's this concept called scale. If you want to scale, you need a team. It's, it's, it's a one-man band, and I know you know this very well. <laughs> it is, it's, you get to a point, I think out of ego, you like, man, I could do it. I could do it. I could do it. And and I applaud it because I'm one of those one man band guys. But I've I've finally grown into I've matured into an entrepreneur where I was like I went mean, really what we we're saying is solopreneur like we're a solopreneur. But um, I'm ready to transition into entrepreneurship where I can hire out because that's the only way I can scale. And so it's everything if you want to scale as an artist. And let's and let's be honest too. I think an artist has to. I remember asking these questions when I would sit and work with talent. And I'd be like, what kind of artist do you want to be? You know, do you want to be stadium artists or do you want to be, uh, you know, I, I do, the, I do the, 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 the chicken circuit, you know, you know, uh, chitlin circuit is what they, what they call it. Um, there's no right or wrong. It's all preference. It's all subjective. It's like how, it's just what do you want? Because that determines on how much input is required. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I think an assessment of like an honest assessment too, like an honest assessment and self-report of like, damn, what kind of artist do I want to be? Do I want to do I want to do all that work? Yeah. Because it, if you think becoming Drake level, because that's just one of the most extreme levels that we can go to, doesn't come with an absorbent absorbent amount of and it's an enormous it's an enormous degree of work to get to that level right do you want to work that hard right right, right, right. <laughs> and do you, you want to see your family right. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah i think that's the first question that artists should ask themselves and then after that start devising a plan you know as to all right i need to build a team and again, I think I, I, Kanye said something that he was like, artists should hire CEOs. And when he first said it, I was like, that's crazy, you know. And then it started to, like, resonate. And I was like, yeah, they should, actually, you know, because um, the CEO is going to create operation and create structure so that way the project can be successful. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that would be my uh, advice. Right. And coming from Florida and just, you know what I'm saying, putting in all the work you have put in over the years, like, to now witness someone from Florida become as big of an artist as Rod Wade. Do you think that's like, it's like unbelievable watching what he's doing as an artist coming from Florida? Nah, not not at all. Like, I think that, I mean, I've seen so many artists reach certain heights in Florida. I mean, you know, like we 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 had Pitbull, we had Flo Rider, we had Rick, um, Rick Ross. Um, so uh, uh XXX, um shit, Lil Pump. Um man, I think we have a, a uh Trina of course. Um we we have so many great examples of successful talent um that I'm not surprised. You I mean, if if talent, um, as they say, like cream will rise to the top. So yeah, like if you're, if the talent's there, if work ethic is there, and it's it's a bit of a it's a it's a lot of planning and luck. Right, right, right. It's right. a lot of planning and luck. So um, I'm not surprised. No. no. Right, right. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally agree. I totally agree. And with the media, with the, with the, with the media seeming like it's taking over. Do you feel like it's like the next wave, like as far as everything? You think? Do you feel like media can outgrow the artists? 
Um, so when I'm when I sit, yeah, I like that question. Um, when I sit with like a client, I'm already like priming their 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 mind frame to understand that you might sell fajas. That might be your, your business. But you're also a media company. Right, right. <laughs> so I, I don't know if you, you may have not known, but, you, you know, like you're a media company now. If, <laughs> as soon as you post on social media, you're a media company. So and I think they're hand in hand now. Like, I mean, because to be honest with you, like you can make, we can sit here in this, in this, in this, in this studio right now and we got everything to, do, to record and make music. And we can make that song, and it could be fire. This could be the next hit for 2025. But if we don't push it using media, then we just got a hot song on a hard drive. You know, so, uh, so I don't know if I would say media would. Damn, I actually, see, I, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be careful. <laughs> right, right now, media, it does seem media, that way. Uh, right, right, right now, because like right now, it seems like media is the number one vehicle. You know what it is? I'll be honest with you. Media, uh, and, and, and media comes in various formats, but media, as we know it, within especially in our culture, is is more context. Is more is more valuable. Like somebody can sit here, and I might listen to a song, and I'm like. I like this, you know, this is my joint. You know, I put this on when I get it, I want to get in my feels or whatever, or I'm just, I'm in the car. But more and more, and this could be my age, I find myself being in the, in the, in the, in the, in the car, listening to podcasts. I, you know, I don't know. How about yourself? Like, right. <laughs> right. okay, so it, you, you, you know, might be right about what you suggested. Yeah, man. It, 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 you know, with the times, with the economy and times getting harder, you know, the information is becoming more important than anything. Absolutely. So it's like the podcast is that's providing the correct information. It's kind of like they they taking over. It is. I think there's a it's a hunger, an insatiable hunger for information. You know. We've never lived in a time where your question can be answered in like five seconds. You know, like we're in a such a special time that people want they they want they want the information. You know, so when you when you create the platform and the format of media or the content that somebody can go and listen and say, man, I didn't know that. Like how, that's why, that's exactly why we watch drink, drink champs to get insight on how the music business work. Right, you know, so right. we're, we want more out of it now. And I think that because of how music was um, devalued because of technology, it was just a natural evolution. I mean, if you want to put any kind of like, um, if you want to give, if you want to push blame, then you would, you will push blame on the capital uh, capitalism, right? Uh, we the best way we can make money um, to get the point B from point A to point B in the little the shortest amount of steps and make the most profit. You know, technology really devalued music because we these we don't have the same experience, the same connection because we had to work for it. You know, like if you wanted to get if you wanted to hear somebody you either went if you wanted to hear a, your favorite song from when i grew up you either had to go to the cd store or you had to go see the the the, the bootleg man right right you know so now it's just like you can hear any song you want you know at any time and i think in with that innovation we started to there's a concept called delayed gratification and we don't practice that anymore because it's like I want it now, and it's and that's why you hear that phrase like microwavable, you know, media or microwavable music, is because it was, it's just it's too easy now. Like you got to get that's why I, I kind of like where it's going now, where people are, are starting to implement like direct to uh, direct to customer strategies. Right, like right. Make them build the community, but make uh, but. Create a way that your 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 community has to get more engaged, you know, with with your music, and because you really, to be honest, what I tell people, I was like, you only really need like a thousand super fans, and your life will be different. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know For what I'm sure. saying? So, damn. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I went on a tangent. Yeah, so <laughs> so so how do how do you feel about like seeing seeing Trick that he kind of like recreate himself through the media with his cooking show and everything? I get it. I get super excited, and I get like super like like yeah, you you know because we we hip hop does got an age problem, right? I don't understand it. It, it seems like it's only in this genre. You know, we might see that shift. We're such a new genre. It's such a baby genre. You know, it's so young. So we might see that shift. But there is ageism. Um, I got some theories, but yeah, some <laughs> scientific theories. But, you know, uh, maybe for another episode. Yeah. But when I see it, when I see people that are what, I, what we probably consider like leg- legacy or legendary, um, make that pivot and be successful at it, I, I can't do nothing but be happy. You know, that's why I see the Norries and I see Trick and I see, when I see Fat Joe, you know, do that shit from an iPhone at, you know, at one point, you know, I was just like, it gives, it's, it's, an, it's inspiring because, you know, I'll be honest with you, like, I feel like, damn, did I hit, you know, I, I felt like I ain't never hit my peak yet. You know, I was supposed to get the Grammy, but then I now learned that, you know, the politics of it now. I was like, damn, do I still want the Grammy? You right. know, um, but there's still an opportunity for me to create impact now because of content and media. Right, right, right. So you fully prepared to take advantage of the opportunity. A thousand percent. Oh, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm t- a ten, ten, ten. You know, ten toes. I'm in, man. I'm, I'm. This is it. This is the, the, the next chapter. Like I said, I'm still doing music. I am still, I'm still working with artists. It's just not as a, um, it's not as focused. You know, like I said, you know, it's usually. Some people know me from back then, uh, back when I was, that was my focus, and they reach out and was like, yo, I need a pack, I need some joints, or I need a song. Um, so I'm commissioned that way, rather than like I'm outwardly like hitting A&Rs, and R's and I'm just playing a different game. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You move, you're moving at your pace and moving on your time. And I'm, and I'm in so much more at peace. Right, I'm right. I'm so much, I mean, you, you go through the placement process, you know, the Trina pro- process where, you know, I got, you know, the Nikki placement, and I got the Little Wayne placement, and the Seven Streeter placement, and the Light Skin. Like, I pretty much did, like, a good 60%, 70% of that project, but it took, like, three years. Right, right, right. If, well, at least it felt like three years, and it was, a, it, was a, it was such a process, and it was an opportunity for me to see the inner workings. Like, oh, I see where the label dropped the ball. I see where a label distributor dropped the ball. I see where maybe somebody on my side... Uh, maybe my lawyer or, you know, it's, it's, you, you, you can see when there's so many hands touching the project, there is a lot of opportunity opportunity for things to go wrong. That's why I got into project management. You know, where um, project management is the, those are the people that move the project along and communicate with all the different teams to make sure, like, we don't bottleneck and we're reaching our milestones, we're reaching our goals. So I realized... Um, I'm really into tech, I realized that if we took that same culture of work and brought it to what we do as indies, you will, you, you'll start to see scale. You'll start to see the success that where people can pour into where, like, now, you, now you're an artist that can really hire people because we, we done made a plan for you to monetize. It ain't just off the music. We going to monetize this way because, oh, look, we can start selling this or we can start building the community and maybe get them into a subscription model or something like, you know, you just start brainstorming on different verticals and different um, uh, cash flows. Cause that's what all companies, I mean, all companies need in the beginning It's called performance marketing. They need cash flow. Yeah. Okay. So like for all the up and coming artists and all the up and coming entrepreneurs and, and people out there like that might need your services. Yeah. Like, how can they reach out, reach out to you? How can they get in contact with you? Oh man, the Audio Jones, you know, spelled as it sound, audiojones.com, at Audio Jones. Very simple. Reach out to me. You can DM me. I think I got I got my real phone number on my website. So, you know, you can check me, call me. It's gonna be me picking up in the beginning. You know, so yeah, just reach out, man. You know, I love to I love to teach. I love to inform. I really believe in like empowering you guys, because if you guys get to where you guys are are turning the corner 
on your with your success where now you you're making that cash flow you can build the team you need you can hire the team you can hire the individuals that's going to help take you to the next level so yeah man please reach out and you know uh let's let's definitely build right and once again like let them know all the services that you provide Oh, a thousand percent. You know, if you need a if you need a marketing plan, a marketing, uh, you need a social media calendar. Um, if you need you need a brand kit. You know, like when you're working with um, a quick, easy use case uh, for a brand kit, you 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 send. You got a marketing team, and you need to communicate to that marketing team like the guidelines. Like, oh, when we do our mark, anytime you do anything for me aesthetically in terms of graphics we use this type of font we use this color palette like you need to be able to communicate that and it's really about just those systems if you need the systems i do systems and automation if you need an email marketing campaign if you need to set up a landing page so you can start building your email list anything in marketing and branding we're going to educate you uh, we're going to consult you and we're going to also help you build it we'll work with you directly so we can get you to where you want to be help you get your first hundred emails Right, right, right. And how how important do you feel like this this is for like some of the up and coming artists that's trying to focus on building their own independent brands? So it's everything. It's again, it's 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 working from the mind frame that this is how you this is how you, you would run any business. So I don't I don't see why as an artist why it would be any anything different. Another reason that this is um, essential, let's say if you want to transition from indie and partner with somebody uh, to make the investment, is if you go to a, an investor and you got, and you can show them that you got 500 to 1,000 emails, you, that much, you only substantiate why they need to give you the money. Right, right. If you're looking, if you want to play that game, you know right. what I'm saying? So uh, it's essential. It's it's. it's you would do it if you was running a shirt business, a custom print business. So you you need just it's it's one on one. Right, right, right. And if you don't mind speaking on it, uh, for the people that's unfamiliar, like, what was your relationship with the live from live from the what is live from the trap? Live tra- from the trap. Yeah. Live from the trap brand. So, yeah. So uh, my my boy uh, Ruga was a uh, you know he founded it, he started it, and um, I really came in. You know, as I was getting into marketing and branding and video production, I really just came in and was like, you know, with all these these ideas and I would press them. And I was like, Yo, you know, let me come in and all right, let me shoot. Let me come in. And I had, I don't, at the time I owned like a 360 photo booth. So I was like, yo, we could bring the 360 photo booth here and we can create branded, you know, 360 videos. And every time the artist, now they're posting this vertical uh, portraits, uh, 360 video. So I was really there as in the capacity of, um, uh, video production and marketing uh, and social media and then uh, it was it was a great experience uh, you know I'm really proud of that team and I'm really proud of those guys because they created a platform and they really became a new springboard that for Florida that was it was a great experience it was an awesome experience for sure shout out to live from the trap shout out from shout out to live from the trap most definitely right and from 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 that experience, like, do you plan on creating any anything similar, like, for your own brand or, um, for my own brand, I, I'm I am starting an academy, an academy for entrepreneurs, uh, which include indie artists, where, um, we do sim, uh, webinars and some of them will be seminars, uh, where we bring you in it, with much more intimately, so we work alongside you and help you develop the systems that you need. Like, you know, one thing that I, I tend to see kind of rampant is that we miss, we don't have the business acumen to get to the levels that we need because it's all information. Right. And um, you gotta know the right, you gotta, you gotta know to ask the right questions. And if you can't write that, ask the right questions, then and that's what we're here for to kind of like bridge the gaps like fill in the gaps we'll we'll do is we'll take a whole evalu- evaluation of what you got going on and we say you know we'll assess it and take a look and say hey have you thought about this and, and this strategy let's let's look into maybe getting you with this brand partner who has a, a particular community that we might see that your brand could service and you know you can uh, definitely leverage 
Right. So we, we, yes, I would, but it would, it'd, it'd probably be less, you know, like creative. It'll be, it'd be more around marketing and branding, but yeah, I'm definitely looking at building those platforms. Also doing stuff like, like what we doing now, you know, uh, creating content with talent and, um, helping them kind of see the value of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, you guys are out there making great, great music, but I think it's in these exchanges that people can really make, get a better look at you and get a, and figure out if they're going to, you know, I like, I, I like what he said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and follow it. Now you, right. you build that fanship uh, through these type of mediums. Right. And uh, do do you feel like now, do you feel like nowadays with the Florida music scene and the Dade County music scene, like, what are some things you, you feel like that are that are missing that we need that may have been here before as far as like underground radio stations and things like that? Do you think do you feel like those like some of those situations need to be recreated? I think so. I, th- I think that we need. We need a. Uh, we need something that could springboard talent a lot like what we had back then, like underground radio. I'm just trying to think of like the medium, you know, like if it's an internet radio station or is it like, um, I'm pretty sure is there, is there a Spotify playlist for like South Florida? It may be, I'm not, I'm not really familiar, but I'm, I'm sure it is. Cause right now it's, it's, it's so many Florida <laughs> artists that that's doing their thing. It's like it's so many. So I'm pretty sure it got to be one man. Cause from the whole state of Florida, like right now, man, it, it's, it's an amazing what they're doing. You know, it's too many to name, man. And from all different parts of Florida, you got. Uh, let me just throw some names out there. You got uh, Boston Richie. You got. Okay. You got Wiz Haven. You got uh, Lil Tyler. You got. You got C Stunner. You got Golden Boy Count Up. You got mm-hmm. Fat Pocket. You got D Thirty. You got Jimbo. You got. S C Y Jim, you got oh man, it's so many, and you know what I'm saying, and it's like, and it it's throughout the whole state of Florida, so it's like, right now, like, if you're from Florida, man, you just got to smile, man. Right, right, right. I mean, I'm it's a it's a good time to be alive. Right, you right. You know, it's a lot of talent, and it's and and I think that um, and no, not no disrespect to. You know any of the other Florida artists I didn't name? It's just I just want y'all to know it's too many of y'all, man. Yeah, no, it's just <laughs> and that's hey, and yeah. that's in a, that's in a good way. Yeah, you know that's, what I'm saying? That's 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 with that's with that's with love. Anybody particular? Uh, anybody from Miami that we you think I should be looking out for? Yeah, you got a lot, man. Okay, okay. You got right. you got D thirty. You got uh. You got six K fly. You got uh, man, it's a lot, bro. It's a lot, man. I gotta go do some homework. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go lot. do some homework. And right now, man, I feel like you know what I'm saying. A lot of the new artists don't really know you or know your sound. I feel like right now your sound is your sound is very needed. You know what I'm saying. I feel like your sound is very needed. So I mean, I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate that. You know, I I definitely agree. You know that I because I've taken such a hiatus. You know to just kind of like skill up. Um, that I, I when I think about it, right, like coming back and be like, oh, I'm gonna go make another run back in the streets, go do it like I did it back in, and I, I definitely think I'm like, but what's the sound now? You know, like, um, what's the vibe? What's the feel? You know, um, and that's definitely it's 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 still there. You know, I can't, I, I haven't turned off the producer in me, so I'm definitely gonna have to do some homework, get back out there in in in, in the field, so to speak. And um, and start getting them packs back out there, right? Right, <laughs> so right. So we can hit the tag right. again. Yeah, this, yeah, man. Cause you know you, you owe it to yourself at another run. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm young, man. I'm I'm still a baby out here. You yeah. know, I'm just for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And then you know, at the same time, you know, it's all about passing the game, passing the torch to the youngsters. So you know what I'm saying? Your sound is no telling. You know what I'm saying? What your sound might help these youngsters create as far as the music, you know what I'm saying? A, a thousand percent. I think we live in a, in such a great time because I don't necessarily. I used to aspire to make music to get on the radio, you know. Um, I don't. I don't have the same passion for getting on the radio rather than um, making great music and people being like, "But I love this song." Because how many times have I heard music that that was people would share with me that 
for a fact wasn't on the radio. And right. I started to see that trend and I said, man, I just rather make hot shit, you know, that that the game unchanged, man. The streets out of radio right now. That's a fact. Yeah, the streets the streets out of radio. That's a fact. You know what I'm so now what that what that does to me is it, it just is it provides like freedom. Like freedom to make what you want and how you want. Like if I wanna if I come to somebody and be like, man, we're gonna do a whole new version of some type of, you know, uh something from a different era that probably wouldn't have worked trying to trying to follow the format of radio you know what i'm saying like we go all right man we might it might not i might have, i might not send you a trap beat right right, right. <laughs> might be a soul sample or something on it <laughs> you right. know what i'm saying so yeah it's i like the freedom of it now yeah yeah it, it's the best time to have fun being a creator if, if you're a producer or an artist it's the best time to have fun being a creator man i love i love that you said that yeah because you, you can really be you now you know I, I, I really do love that you said that, like having fun, because what happens to to creatives in this process when you introduce so much the, the business side, you'll get consumed by it, and then it becomes a job. Right now, if, it, if it's if you if it's true, you know, if you're true in passion, then you're gonna be like, all right, well, cool, I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do, but it does become like more job like like damn all right, all right now i gotta do some work but like getting back to like just sitting in the session and just like man we don't know what we're gonna make today right. you know like getting back to that yeah i i i do I, I wouldn't mind a session or two like that absolutely yeah man and you know now nowadays it's just all about the collaborating bro and just cooking up you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you get with artists now you could just cook up you can release the music whenever however and you know, do the correct business, make sure the splits and everything right, everybody get what they're owed, and just continue to feed the fans. That's what it's about to me now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just just please the fans, man. No, a, th a thousand percent. I think that it's so easy to be transparent and do the work and do the business. I mean, back in the day, you know, we, 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 we our split sheets were like on paper. <laughs> you know, now it's like, we ain't gotta do that no more. It's, just, it's a whole different process. So it, the business can be done easier you know and it doesn't have to feel so like you know it get weird in the room when you be like all right guys let's get these split sheets out you know <laughs> so now that it can be done electronically i think they streamline the process so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to doing a lot more collaborations um I, I still got you know thousands of beats you know so i'm like i bet i'm not not making the tracks i just haven't been trying to service them especially because of the this new space that i'm I, i'm in like right. I'm really passionate about like teaching and, and getting and getting people uh, primed and get them give the, giving them the tools to be successful in this music industry. Right, right. And for all the up and coming producers, right? Mm -hmm. Explain to them the importance of having their business together so they could, you know, survive and make income off the residual income. Oh, that yeah, man. Okay, so um producers, don't um get your business right. Same thing I would tell an artist: go get your LLC, go do your get your business bank account, go get a, a website, go get your, um, go go set up your business profile to get set up to get lending. And there's so many lending options out here now. Like you got Beatbread, you know, if you get so many so many streams, they'll actually give you in advance. Sometimes up to eight eight times what you make annually. So if you gross, let's say you gross, uh. 10 15k on royalties you can get eight times the in advance eight to t uh, eight t up to eight times of what you make gross and that's that could be seed money to start another business another cash flow so also get creative you know like there's so many avenues start looking into sync licensing sync license is great money good good money and um, just get creative, put out and put out your own beats. Start putting out, put out some beat tapes. You know, like the, you don't always have to wait until you get that future placement. You know, just right, <laughs> you right. know, get out there. But you know, and um, uh, set up your storefront. Set up your storefront. I think you need. You know, you you should have a dot com as a as a producer. Sure. How do you feel about the, uh, you know, give them some game about, you know, how you feel about, like, 
producers coming together and making the collaborative collaborative tapes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just working together. And I think. Oh man. So I think it's like a no brainer, right? If two producers come together and they and they both respectfully got fan bases, right? When I drop this beat tape. And you could do some. You could do something like this, like a ten, a, a ten pack. You and a, another producer, and he gonna put up five. I'm gonna put up five, and we are gonna say, man, this for the streets. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go get, go get your rap on. Just make sure we do the business on the back end. Right, right. Everybody in y'all respective corners gets to hear the other producer. So collaboration is, is so underestimated. It's a very useful strategy. Right, right. A thousand percent. And as far as the different uh the, the different uh distributors on the music, like you know what I'm saying? Like you got Distro Kid and yes. all other platforms, like which one do you recommend? Oh, okay, that's a great question. So I think that they all fairly do the same thing, some at different cost. Um to me, I would I've been suggesting to most clients two loss. I mean it's three dollars a month, five dollars a month if you want to be a label. You you put up your music. And this is, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, an affiliate marketer for them. You know, it's just like a real, like, right. you know, as I consult, I go and look and I do the uh, uh, cross benefit analysis. And I said, for me, it was two loss. You know, if you don't, the one thing I don't like about DistroKid is if you don't pay your annual, they, they give you, you know, you get that email like, man, we about to take your music down, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, damn, you can take my money, but <laughs> you know, um, Two Loss doesn't operate like that. Once it's up, it's up. And Two Loss also, damn, I'm really doing a commercial for them boys. Them boys going to have to um, send us something, I guess, a little bit, right? Um, but sure. they, <laughs> they got, um, they're in 400 plus stores. So what does that mean? Your music is going to be in what their claim is that they have the most stores for your music to be distributed to. So that's always great because it's just more, um, that's more opportunities for people to discover your music. Right, right, right. So two laws. That's what you rolling with. That's what I'm rolling with. <laughs> <laughs> so we do a collab, <laughs> it got to be on two laws. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, it's cheap. It's cheap. You know, like I think there's a big like, there's this big concept around like distribution. I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this. Um, distributors have this. Oh, we could do a 90-10, we could do a 20-80, we're going to do a 70-30, you know what. But we, we, we're taking a percentage of your royalties because we're going to give you label services. If you decide to operate that, so, operate that way, I would, I, would, I would suggest you ask what is label services. Right. What right. is that? Right. Because I'm still trying to figure out what label services is. <laughs> yeah, right. And I've worked with distributors. So I was like, well, so what we, it's like it's a hybrid of, well, we got people like that, you know, that know about street teams and street promotion. And then I was like, all right, we'll just itemize it so I can see it, so I can quantify it and say, that's why I'm giving you 20%. Right, you can, right. If you got to put a price tag on it, you know, it's, it's very like a lot of gray area yeah. shit. <laughs> in, in other words, if I'm going to agree to give you 20%, Please show me why why I'm paying you twenty percent. <laughs> That's a fact. That's right. a fact. It's like and, yeah, and, you don't get label services. And, and break it down to me in a, in a break it down to me in the simplest form. Don't give me all the big words and yeah, all that. You know, you know, it's so funny because they be like, I'm gonna give you label services. I was like, well, most people you know that, that dealing with you ain't never been signed to a label. Right. So they don't know what label services is, so it's crazy. It's still they still playing games. They still play to me because it's like I don't gotta do that. I'm gonna pay three dollars. My shit gonna be distributed. It's up to me. I gotta do the marketing. Unless they're gonna give you a marketing budget. Right, 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 right. The marketing costs money. So if you okay, so then you gonna front the marketing and that's why you're taking the twenty. Okay. Well now I wanna see your marketing plan. Right, right. Send me the marketing uh, plan proposal so I can approve it. Do you know my brand? Do you do you you need my brand kit like we were talking about? You know, they probably not doing that. Right. right. <laughs> you know, they probably not doing that. So like I said, I'm finna get in trouble, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's definitely all good because, you know, we, we, we breaking bread and we exchanging the information yeah. to the people. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. And, and that's what it's all about. You know, if we get in trouble for that shit, I'm willing to get in trouble. Hey, you know, they say, um, I always tell myself, I said, man, Jesus went in there and he flipped them tables. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he, he got to pay for it, but <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm willing to flip the tables because I've I've been – on the other side so many times you know like and i'm like i ain't 
we don't got to, it don't got to be this way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it don't got to be this way. It really don't. Right. It's just like, man, let's do fair business. Like if I, if I, if I offer a service, I'm going to tell you, this is what you're going to get. This is how you're going to get your return on investment. Cause I, I think that's how you build the best working relationships. You know, with labels, it's like, it's so, you would need a, like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Most producers will never see royalties, not mechanicals. Right. They're, you know, the only, the most royalties that the, a producer uh, will see is what is called publishing, uh, which is break break down how many different uh, royalties the producers is supposed to receive. Man, it's it's several different uh, uh, royalties. You know, you man, I would say the main ones that you're probably going to be familiar with is your publishing, which comes through your PRO, right? Your ass caps and your BMIs. Then you got your mechanicals. Then there's you know you got to go get set up with your sound exchange. So there's there's definitely different buckets of royalties um the ones that probably matter the most to the producer if we're talking to the producer producer is gonna be your publishing here's the problem publishing only accrues if it was on radio or tv now you can still get accrue publishing on streaming but it has to be on a playlist and it and it's what is called non-reactive that means the i only get paid if somebody listens to a song i produce if it was on a playlist and what is called a non-reactive stream so if i go if somebody somebody can go and stream my song that i produced and they they stream it a thousand times a day i don't make any publishing unless it's on a playlist unless it's on a playlist do you think that's fair to the producers? Well, you know what my answer gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my answer gonna be. Hell no. Nah. So why why you why you think that's in place like that to take advantage of the producer? I think it's an antiquated and very convoluted process, right? Because the producer, for a producer to even be able to receive royalties from like a sound exchange, I have to go to the artist and give them what is something called a letter of direction. And the artist got to sign off on that letter of direction, like, okay, yeah, yeah, you can get some royalties, you know. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, is, so you got to chase down your money. As I said, most artists will never see mechanicals. They'll, it, it, here's another reason why. Let's say you go through the major placement process, and they uh, you took in advance because I've I've tried this too. Like I've tried to like like buck the advance. I'll be like, I don't want the advance. Just give me um, give me fifty percent. Yeah. are like, oh, we don't do that. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I'm. I, I ain't gotta pay me. You just, I'll take my equity out of you know, but I wanted them fifty percent. They never go for it. Why? Because they know that the money's in the royalty. So once you take an advance, you can't receive. Let's say in your producer agreement is for three points or four points. If you get, if you get a good lawyer and you negotiate for four points, before you can start accruing those points on royalties, they have to do something called recoup. So let's say they paid you 7500 because 7, that, that, that's my current fee. I ain't scared to put it out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't get no, I don't receive royalties until the artist recoups, not just the 7500 they paid me, well, the whole project. Everything they invested <laughs> out the project? <laughs> the whole project. Damn. I'm like, well, I ain't got nothing to do with the whole project. I just got that one song. God damn, that's highway robbery. <laughs> you, you, you see why I decided to like make the pivot. I was just like, I, I really learned the game, and I said, oh, something fucking wrong here. <laughs> God. And they playing with the money. Right. <laughs> they playing with the money. So I had to go. In. That's why I prefer working with indies. So so how that so how does that work with when some of the artists has the whole like one producer produced the whole album. Um, that, is that more favorable for the producer, or is that even more? as a, as a from an independent aspect or a major? From a major, like uh, like you see, I recently like Future and uh, Metro, yeah, did the whole album together. Like, is that that's is that better for Metro when it comes down to collecting his money as the producer, or that that has so many layers? Because I'm I'm trying to answer it yeah. the right way because it's like. It could be better for him as an investment to continue to increase his value by doing a, a joint project with Future. So what happens is that's going to build up his brand equity. So now 
his cost goes up. Right, 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 right. So now business outside of that deal is going to look great because now people are going to be like, man, I want to work with you because you did what you did with. And with. when we speaking about his cost, for the people unfamiliar, we speaking about his, his, his upfront yeah, price, that, prices that, for that, his yeah, beats, right? That advance. Right. You know, that advance. Um, so that allows him to charge premium. So like maybe somebody like that be like, yeah, man, I do $25,000, $30,000 a beat. Very easy. Right. You know, the $200,000 a beat days, them shit is over. I'm, you know, maybe 50000 Right, but right, right. It, but it also could be good for him because he was like, okay, maybe I will see if I do the whole project, I get paid. I still get paid my advance. And w- with the label, we know that there's more likely to be a budget, you know, maybe like, you know, a production budget. You might see, you might be able to eat that whole production budget. So you get that big look. It, it, it depends on what you, it's, it's going to be some trade-offs. Right, right, Because right. again, that project got to be recoup before he seen he sees any kind of like residuals on royalties, so it's a give and a take. It's a give and a take. I can see where there is benefits, but I can see where the loss is going to be. And right. from an independent aspect, is it's great because it just really comes down to what you and that um, artist agree upon, right? So like he can you as a producer, you could ask for. Um, you don't got to do an advance if you don't want to. If you really believe in the project, you can say, "All right, we're gonna do this," but I want fifty percent of the of the every record you produce. <laughs> yeah, I want fifty exactly. percent of every record you produce. Yeah, and yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So we both taking a gamble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's, know, so, that's evenly splitting the the, uh, the, the yeah. splits. And so that's you know that's easy, um, and you have much more equity. That's but again, it's just all on. All right. So breakdowns of the people for me from an independent standpoint, mm-hmm. the win win. She Keith just had with his independent project. He just released and he produced the whole project itself. Oh, um, but she, you just put me on. So he he produced it. it did he executive executively produce no, or he made the beats too? He made the beats too. Oh, that and boy's it, making beats. Yeah, and it's independent <laughs> and it's and it sold it sold it sold twenty six thousand first week. Oh, he good. He good. He he he's gonna see. You gotta see the, the he he makes more money. Because he owns the world. He's just, so not, not only... Yeah, I want you to break this down <laughs> right. because a lot of people who don't understand the business, they they thinking that some people thinking that it's not as successful as it is just because it's Chief Keith and it only sold 26000 but they don't understand the business as far as him being independent and him producing every beat on his album. Like every dollar went right back to him and he sold 26,000 copies the first week. Oh, that's phenomenal. As an independent... See, you got to remember... Those numbers we get attached to, one, those are old, like the whole, like we're going platinum. That's like an old concept. It's an old concept. Just, every 1,500 streams uh, uh, is, uh, it is recognized as a sale. So yeah. if we got 26. Yeah, every 1,500 streams. Every 1,500 streams is a sale. So if he sold 26,000, you do the math. Now, here's the thing. He owns 100% of the royalties. Depending on his distribution deal, and he owned hundred percent of the publishing because he made the beat and wrote the song. So, and it's Chief Keef, he's getting playlisted. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so if you think he took the L, man, you got to go pick up a book, <laughs> and you got to really understand how this business works in terms of the numbers. Go learn, follow the money. Right, right. Follow right, the money. Yeah. If you follow the money, you start to see like you'll start you'll stop putting value. And these metrics and these numbers that they put in front of you be like, man, platinum. And I was like, yeah, but he's he's still he's still in the red. Right. right. <laughs> he platinum, but he in the red. What sense that make? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He looking good, but he hustling backwards. Yeah. This shit is just shiny on top. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's just shiny on top. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That's why. I, hey, this is why I was looking so forward to putting up on you because I know you was go you know provide the people with so much insights and so much information, man. Oh man, that's uh, I, I I thank you for you know this the first this the first interview I done did, oh. and like and for <laughs> in, in yeah. years dog. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean I've been that. doing the podcast, but it's like this is the first time like on my podcast I don't really talk about the music like that. So this is an opportunity to like to really like build and really educate your audience, and um, I just appreciate you giving me the opportunity, man. Yeah, man, because I feel like you know. Just with anything, man, especially, you know, some legit things as far as the music business and everything, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like by us being a little older than the youngsters, 
you know, every every information we run across, let's try to, you know, give it back to them if they got their ears open. You know what a, I'm saying? A, a thousand percent. You know, like, yeah, uh, where I'm at now, like I've 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 got into a spirit of like wanting to serve. You know, like you know, help people. You know, I got my limits now. Like, I tell you, go do this, and you go run into a wall. Every, you know, I might not. I might be a let more reluctant to come to your rescue. You know, and I'm like, I told you not to do that. <laughs> you know, but um, um, I believe in each one, teach one. I I came from the game where you know it's like the game meant to be sold, not told. And I'm like, what I what I realized about that is like, okay, cool. That's that that sound good. Most of the time when you give it the information, what I find is most people don't know how to implement it. Right. They still right. gonna need you to implement it. Like I'll give you the game, I'll tell you exactly you need to do all this. You still gotta come back. You probably gotta come back to me because all right, well, I ain't never put a brand board together. I ain't never put a brand kit. Okay, well let's talk some business. You could pay me a consultant's fee. I'll walk you through the process. Now you can do this for the, it, this is an investment. You ain't got to go to school. Or, or, you know, like if you look at it and frame it that way, I'm getting cons- that's businesses pay co- consultants all the time. Right, for sure, for <laughs> sure. I mean? So, I think that we change the way that we look at it. You got to you got to pay to play. Now come on now. It's, it's, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, come on now. <laughs> but that's what that's what anything in life. If a person have a, any kind of understanding about life, you know yeah, what I'm I, I I look at it as like more like. You have to really you have to reach a certain maturity in your business for sure yeah. for sure and i think that's it's probably and to be fair it's probably easy for me me and you because we done we've been been in the mud so long doing this and we like we right. done already bumped our hair so many times so but if you you know aspiring artists really do want to take your business to the next level you know be open to receive the information and don't be don't get caught up in ego and reach out man um Hey, uh, I want to sit down with you, man. Uh, how much? How much is your time? Right, for you sure, know, for like, sure. Just it's an investment in you. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, then why should I? Yeah, for you sure. know what I'm saying. For sure, man. I just like with the information we giving them here. If, if you don't want to listen, you ain't got to listen. <laughs> yeah, you know, you should. You ain't got to listen to me. You know, y'all can go and try keep bumping your head. Yeah, <laughs> you man. know, it's, it's all up to you, but. If you really genuinely want the growth, you know, that's why they got to appreciate a platform like this because it's, it's no bullshit. You know, one of my marketing campaigns right now is um, hashtag I am not a guru. Yeah. You know, because everybody out there is like, I'm a guru, I'm a guru. I'm like, I'm not a guru. I'm a regular dude with just real solutions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to bullshit nobody. It's like, I like that. <laughs> is you going to do it or not? <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. And I just, I just want to motivate them, man. I just want to share everything I can share with them, man, and help yeah. motivate them and help them stay focused. Because I know some of them, you know, you got some of them, you know, now they're young, bro. You got some of them, 15, 16, know how to do the music good. But, you know, you got a lot of them so young, man, they ain't taking the time out to read. They too busy. But mm. they might take the time to listen to the plot, to this here. You know what I'm saying? This might help change their perspective on certain things. Because I feel like nowadays, the younger they are and the younger they decide to, like, learn the business, the, the better they could get ahead. You know, it's like, think about it. Look at somebody like she Keep. He came in the game so young that he's still young. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Hey, hey, forever. And just came back out after after all this time and had a successful run. You Man, see what? God, that is, that's amazing. But <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's true. You know, I don't, I have real, expect, like, my expectations of somebody so youthful, like, developing uh, or having that mind frame is is you know it's probably not that likely but um if all i would say is just for them to be like open to to receive information and i know that there's a lot of fear in the market right now a lot of people don't trust you know that's the, the, the trust right now in the market in all marketplaces everybody got their antennas up because everybody's <laughs> like man you, just, you about to scam me you know that's <laughs> why so I, I get it for sure you know but you you could trust and that's why what you're doing right now is so important and then us sharing the, sharing this information because I think that's where you start to really break down those walls and say, hey, look, we giving it to you raw and uncut. This is, you know, I told you the good and the bad. Right, for sure. And I told you it's like, shit, if you want to run it that way, I can show you how to get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just know you're going to, you got to sacrifice something though. Yeah, for sure, man. Because, you know, like right now, you know, you and I both could be doing anything with our time, but we choosing to 
to have a conversation for them, really. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because the whole conversation, we just, you know, exchanging information for them. So it's like, you know, if they ain't appreciating this, I don't know what, what they'll ever appreciate. <laughs> yeah, you know, they probably got to go bump the head. Like I told somebody uh, yesterday, I said, man, they ain't never been thrown away. Right, yeah, right. So you don't know how I feel yet. Right, right, <laughs> you ain't right. never been thrown away. Yeah, <laughs> man. Go get thrown away. You'll be over here and be like, yeah, boy, you was right. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and going going back to uh, some of your placements that you have with, with labels and the artists, is like, right. Are you currently still receiving residual income from those placements? I'm I'm very happy with the work that I did in my past because every three months I wake up and I'll be like, that's why I was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I was doing for, that. For sure, for sure. And it does inspire me to get back out there and play the game and hit right. the ANRs and send the emails in and yeah, cause chase the, the money again. Yeah, but yeah, the bigger your catalog, the bigger the bag get every three months. That's why I think artists should be releasing songs every two weeks. Build, look at it as digital real estate. Every two weeks, hey, drop hey, a song. Every two weeks, drop a song. Yeah, damn. Hey, you hey, just hey, gave hey. me. You just gave me an idea because you know I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, what I'm saying on some DJ Khaled slash bigger ranking type shit, like some A and R type shit. He's a bigger rank. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so that's what I've been doing, like getting artists together and creating. You know, what I'm saying the music and. And that's what I'm kind of thinking, like, nonstop feeding them. And you just gave me an idea, like, just drop a record every two weeks. Every two weeks, post about it three times a day. That's hard. They have no choice. They're going to be like, man, the consistency. It's really consistency. If it takes, if it's, if it's 11, 12 touch points, that's three times a day, every two weeks with new content. That's me. If I'm in, in the morning, if, I'm, if I got a secret recipe for pancakes with raisins, in the morning, I'm showing you how to make my pancakes with raisins, but I'm playing the song that, I'm, that I released. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we don't have to. I think we get caught up in, like, trying to make everything look so polished, and it's just, like, it's, it's, not, it's not relatable. You know, yeah, it's like that's hard. people really just like to see. That's why we, when, when you, how many people you don't watch on social media, you be like, you don't know that from a can of paint. And then they drop some shit that was either knowledgeable or entertaining. Like, not everybody on there is, is, is you know, Justin Bieber. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's regular people making, re you know, a relatable content. And artists, um, at least from my from my era, I know, like, it was so hard for me to transition because I was too cool for school. Right. You know, right. With social media. <laughs> I was just too cool for it. But, man, if I could go back, if, if there's anything that I could do again, I would have been so active on social media. I'd have been, that's all I'd have been focusing on. Right, right. For sure. For sure, man. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. with that being said, you feeling like the artist should drop a record every two weeks. With that being said, and you having over a thousand beats oh, in, yeah. in the stash, like yeah, I'm yeah, saying, yeah, 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 what, yeah. What, what can 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 Audio Jones help the artists feed the people every two weeks? A th oh, a thousand percent, man. I'm, I'm 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 prepared to go on that campaign. I'm ready to go on the campaign. Six months. Let's go. Six months. <laughs> Hit me up. Yeah. Yo, we got y'all gonna, gonna help me take the streets over again. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure, man. You know, sometimes you gotta, you know, pump back up. You gotta let them. Hey, take that out there. Show them what we got. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, man. I feel like right now, definitely, it'll definitely be a good time. You know what I'm saying? For the people to hear some of the new artists on your beats, and it'll yeah. definitely be a great time to hear. Some more Audio Jones and Ice Billion Bird. Some more Audio Jones yeah, and Lil Dread. My boy, I gotta get, I gotta get back with bruh. I yeah. gotta get back with bruh. You ain't lying. That was, that was good chemistry right there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's great classics, man. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think, um, um, I want to get back to the fun part. You know, like I want to make it fun again. That was, you know, that was fun times. You know, we sit, you know, sitting in the lab, you know, trying to come up with those, with those vibes or. Send it when you you know you making the beat you get really excited. Hey, you send it over and and now the record done and then you and then it then it come out and then you like oh shit people eating this shit up. This is this is fire. You yeah. know <laughs> this is fire. So I still I still get excited about stuff like that when people really enjoy the music because I really do love music and that's why I think that I'm I made the pivot is because I know I still want to be in music and I still want to serve within this community even if it means from a different dynamic, but I'll never stop being a producer. Right, right. So with that being said, can the streets get a beat tape? Oh, of course. Of course. We, let's, let's call, uh, let's, let's do one for the platform. 
Oh, that's that's what's up. That's <laughs> Let's what's do up. one for the platform. That's what's up. <laughs> Let's do one for the platform. I'm with our, that, this will be our collab. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that, <laughs> man. I, Most I, th- I think what'd be good too for you, man. You know what I'm saying to get your sound back out there too. I think, I think she'll get with a couple of these artists, man, and, and knock out a couple ciphers too. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm. You know, it's. I'm ready to do. Not just that, but also. Um, because of the resources I have now is being able to be say, okay, we could do something successful. And, and plus the experience of working on campaigns like Live from the Trap, um, I, I, I saw a blueprint and a formula. And one thing that I've, I've learned, you know, from my mentors is, you know, they always, they, they, they always tell me audio success is repeatable, you know, success is predictable. You know, it's like, I, I liken it to anybody can make a blueberry pie. Right, just right. follow the recipe, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, for don't sure, deviate. For sure. <laughs> don't deviate. This, if you just do this, you can always get that good blueberry pie. So we could definitely create, you know, different. Um, um, I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a brain. I'm a think tank. So I, I always thinking about like, man, what if we, we make a platform where we bring in local, you, you know, the, the talent from the crib, we. But not just perform your song. How about you come on and sing your favorite cover, your favorite your favorite song that you grew up on, right? Now we get to see you in a more jovial, light spirit. That you know. Now we can be like, damn, why, right, man? Oh boy, he he killed that man. He he just did that one twelve song. You know. Now you them you you get an opportunity for uh, people to see, you know, some personality, and introduce new people to your music. So I'm always thinking about like marketing strategies and things like that too. So I'd be definitely interested in uh, putting some shit together. For sure, man. Say no more. You know, we go, we go make that happen. You heard, you heard. And speak about your, uh, your relationship with, with, with the liquor, with the liquor brand you promote. Okay. So yes. So very, uh, this is very exciting. So I am, uh, project management and CMO, uh, for, uh, Pateri, which is a, Van, uh, brandy, vodka, passion fruit uh, cocktail, ready to drink. You know, um, it's delicious. It's amazing. I'm not just saying that because I'm, part, you know, because I'm, I'm a part of the business. It really is good. You know, the sugar, co- the sugar content is, uh, you know, my, I don't. I if when I'm drinking, I usually drink straight. But the sugar content is not that bad. It's, it's actually pretty low, and it's made from. Great ingredients, and man, which is, I mean, it's it's dope. The serve is it's really for the ladies, you know. Like I think that the ladies is gonna love it. But what we are, we doing some interesting um, campaigns where we're gonna be bringing on, much like we were mentioned about the B tape collaboration, right? Right. Um, we're doing a competition where we're taking records that's being we're we're, we're, we're putting collabs, kind of like a, a DJ Khaled type of thing. Uh, all. Though we're creating a a competition with a voting system, so artists can jump on the songs, and they get their people to vote for it. And the, the whoever wins the competition, they get a they get the free photo shoot, they get the free video, all sponsored and uh, uh, all sponsored by Pateri. Oh, that's hard. That's hard. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's a great hard. opportunity for the well, artists. It's an awesome opportunity. Let me tell you why. Because yeah. artists. When company other companies see that companies like uh, uh, Pateri are willing to sponsor you, that only elevates your brand. Yeah. So other sponsors are gonna be they're gonna want to tap in with you because obviously we took a, a liking to what you got going on. Right, right, and you know, man, you know, I I love to see stuff like that. So whoever the winner be, whoever the winners be, man, I'm I'm also give them an interview on the platform. Look at that extra exposure. Come on now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's that's too much. And all you got to do is do a good song. Yeah, for sure. For <laughs> you sure. know what I'm saying? I like to motivate them, man, and keep them busy. Yeah. Doing yeah. doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if music it was always an outlet, you know, and if you're doing music, you should be doing music, you know, and, and getting your music out and doing the work because it's hard work. Like three posts a day ain't easy. Right, for sure. <laughs> so, for sure. So you got to you got to be working so you can have the content. You got you to be know working. You know what I'm saying? So you yeah, got to be working, I man. I don't see where you got a lot too much time to be doing anything else. Yeah, man. Like I just like, you know, like 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 with me, man, you know, as I grow with my company, 
these these next year, few years and stuff, man. Like I'm trying to be able to set myself up to get in the tap mode, like somebody like Vlad TV. Like I I just be sitting sometimes, sometimes sitting down just looking like, damn, this motherfucker release content every hour of the day. He like he's got a he's got a factory. Yeah, he, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's got a factory. If but, the, but the, you got to appreciate. The decades of the hard work he done put in to put right. himself in his predicament. A thousand percent. So it's easy for us to look at it and be like, you know, damn, you know, this, this, we, you know, you, we could do that. And it was like, uh, I don't know. You got that. That's a, a a process of refinement. You know, he he iterated until he got it working. Like I tell people all the time, like, yo, the biggest investment you should be making. If I was gonna, if I had like ten k, I would spend uh, a good. 70% on content. Right, right. For sure, for sure. <laughs> it would be like a no-brainer for me. Like, all my investment would go into um, content. And not, and not just, like, typical content, right? You know, like, um, I still think music videos have, like, a use case. I just I just think that it, it could be done differently. Like, I don't think you got to go and break the bank. Like, if you, if you spend right. a 10K on a music video, let yeah. me tell you something. You're doing too much, right? <laughs> like, in this era, I think. <laughs> You'll never see your return on yeah, investment yeah, on a yeah, music yeah. video. <laughs> and to be honest, to be honest, in this era, bro, it, it's so many talented videographers, no disrespect. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's so many talented videographers that, you know, will give you a nice video right now, $1,500, $2,000, $2,500. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's reasonable. Got You're, some talented ones out there. Yeah, and they're building their portfolio. And then let me tell you something. Those guys are going to, if you're consistent with them, they're always going to deliver, you know, because we much rather consistency than you hit the one big lick, you know, and then you waiting for the next big lick. Like, be consistent, work out a pro, uh, work out a, I don't want to say a barter system, but work out a, a working relationship where he can prioritize you, but you can be consistent with him. And then, um, but yeah, like uh, the, the, the ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar music videos, I, I don't see uh, uh, I don't see the ROI in it. Not like I not I mean because really, let's be honest. Where are you watching music videos? Because MTV jams and and what uh, BET VH1 like I I don't think they're really playing videos like that. Um, and I don't even think that people are really watching those those channels or those 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 marketing uh, channels. So I say okay, well then, okay they watching it on YouTube. Well. I'm pretty familiar with YouTube and discovery on YouTube that way. It just don't work that way. So it, to me, it would make more sense to pay a videographer to make clips of you performing or doing a, a, a day in a life and chopping it up and making it like that to me would give you more return than an actual full blown production. Not to say that you can't, there's a there's a concept in um, business called a loss leader, like yeah you're not probably gonna make the money off of it, but it was an investment to c- continue to build brand awareness. For sure. So and you, at that point you got to weigh it out. Yeah, and brand awareness is very important, man. Is that is everything? Because even when you think they ain't looking, they see you. Is everything. I don't. I usually don't even <laughs> talk to, to. I tell clients like before. We get into marketing strategies. I'm like, you know, let me see what your brand. Let me let me do in a brand assessment. Like, you know, um, do you have the, the the branding in place or the branding guidelines in place so that way you can actually uh, start a marketing strategy? You know, like how many people can? If I ask most artists, like, who your who what's your demographics or like who's your or who's your client? Like, or who's your customer? Who's your listener? You know, most of them probably can't really communicate it. I mean, they could go to Insights and go from, like, Spotify and stuff like that. But, like, when you start working, when you start getting into uh, working with marketing firms and you start working with research t- uh, research departments that are looking for the people that, like, really love your stuff, the thousand super fans, you'll see something called a client persona, and they'll break it down to how much the person make. A, a year are they married did they go to college like all these these are demographics it a lot of people think demographic stops at female male age range 21 to 35 or some shit like that it's like that's pretty superficial that's that's the world <laughs> you know like did they go to college do they work a job 
uh, did they grow up? Did they go to this high school or something like that? Those are like real demographics and companies spend a lot of money, a lot of money doing that type of research. And if artists can start like, start just thinking about those concepts, they'll see how fast they can grow their business. Right, right, yeah. That's free game, oh, no. Hey, come on now. That's free game, oh, no. I get paid big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's free game, oh, man. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why y'all go to go check out the website. You know, I'm going to be working in concert with my guy here, and we're going to help y'all figure it out. Yeah, for Come sure. and clean your house up. For sure, man. Anything else you want to speak on, man? Man, no, I, I mean, to be honest with you, I just want to say I – I appreciate what you're doing in the space. I think it's so necessary. I was I was working with uh, my team, and I said, media here needs a new renaissance, and what you're doing is vastly needed. And I, I want to say, man, you're a talented uh, interview. You, you had several questions. I was like, man, that's a good-ass question. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you done did that. This, you done did this before. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, man. And this was like, man, I really enjoyed it. You know, it's my... First, like I said, it's my first interview back as yeah, producer, sure. Audio Jones. For sure, man. And I'm, I'm just excited, man, because the streets need this Audio Jones sound right now, man. You just done gave me the word that we're going to do a, a, a joint project. Let's so, go. Hey, you know, <laughs> Let's you, go. You know I'm going to be calling. <laughs> Let's go. I already got the packs ready. Let's go. I appreciate this opportunity, man, and hey, I man. appreciate you. Man I, man, I love this, man. Let's do it again. For sure, man. All right, my brother. Until next time. For sure, one chance, one life TV. Old man and landlord, I'm signing off. You already know. Shout out to all my supporters, man. I appreciate everything, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, man, and help the YouTube channel to continue to grow.